The build for this Bluetooth relative compression dongle starts out with a standard 100 by 60 by 25 millimeter ABS project box and the wall thickness of these uh, boxes is very well suited for accepting this DLC connector. You've seen me use this before on the CAN bus dongle. When you depart from USB and you go to Bluetooth, the first thing you have to contend with is how you're going to power your device. And in this gadget, we're going to be using the 12 volt that's on pin 16 at the DLC. We're going to use a DC to DC converter to bring it to 5 volts. I've chosen the MP1584EN to do this because of its small footprint and because I happen to have one. So it's well suited for this. Um, I soldered some pins to that board so that it can sit on top of the headers. I'd like to say a few words about all of these um, modules that we're using in this build and some of the previous ones. Like that MP1584 is maybe a dollar. Um, STM32 is two dollar. Um, this uh, HC-06 Bluetooth module maybe four dollars. That is taxes and shipped halfway around the world to your door. So we live in this incredible world. It's not a perfect world. Like some of these STM32s will come in and they're duds. Uh, I've had uh, some issues with these Bluetooth modules, a couple of them as well. Uh, maybe they're just shipping us some junk. If I had a way of being able to tell you, you know, look for this or look for that, um, I would, but I can't. And even if I did, sometimes when you order something and it looks a certain way in the picture, what you receive is something else. So there's just no way of uh, dealing with this other than to uh, suck it up. It comes with the territory. The STM32 has to be flashed for this project. Follow the instructions in gadgets number 61. Use the firmware file HS101 Oscilloscope BLT version 6 or higher. HC-06 Bluetooth module has to be prepared. Follow the instructions in gadgets number 71. And that takes us to the circuit board. I host it and some build pictures in my Google Drive. The download link is in the description box. I stated in the demo that this was a very targeted oscilloscope circuit. Here, let's have a look at a typical relative compression waveform. It looks noisy, right? But it actually isn't noise in the pure definition of it. What's actually happening there is that there are two tests that are overlapping. We have the relative compression test that we mean to do, but there is also an overriding commutator test being performed on the starter armature. It is uh, very much like the fuel pump commutator test that we know and are uh, more familiar with. For every time that a compression stroke is encountered, there are hundreds of these small segments that are being encountered. This is what you see riding up and down the peaks and valleys of our relative compression waveform. On the front end of our circuit is a 33 hertz RC low pass filter. It's designed to block frequencies above that and allow our very low relative compression waveform, which is maybe 10 to 15 hertz depending on the engine and the crank speed. Here's the, the end result of that is a pencil thin relative compression waveform. The next part of our circuit is for hardware based AC coupling. For that, we're using 10 microfarad capacitor. That's huge. You'll remember that in gadgets number 45, when we did a, an inline um, AC coupler, and in gadgets 46, when we built in a Hantec 1008 hardware based AC coupling, we used a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And at the time, I explored a little bit to see if we could improve uh, with the value of that capacitor. But uh, in the end, because it had to uh, be able to remove the DC component, yet allow a lot of varying uh, frequencies through, it was the optimum value. 
But here, I had a, an opportunity to revisit that. And because of the very low frequency and that this oscilloscope circuit is only expected to work at that area, I found that the optimum was this 10 microfarad capacitor. It is capable of removing the 12 volt DC component and allow the maximum strength of our AC coupled um, relative compression waveform. We're talking, you know, a few hundred millivolts peak to peak on uh, relative compression uh, tests when they're done with AC coupling. And uh, every 100 millivolt counts, you know, for a better waveform. The remainder is a HS101 plus or minus 5 volt simplified circuit. And this specialized circuit will provide the quickest, cleanest, strongest AC coupled relative compression signal. I prefer to study a raw waveform when I do a relative compression test, but there is a trend towards these fancy colorful bar graphs. H-scope in the automotive module provides that. You get green, yellow, and red at certain thresholds. This device requires the purchase of an H-scope HS101 license at maybe $7.50. You're going to want the automotive module, which is an additional $10. I'm not uh, always current on the pricing. Finally, this device requires no further calibration. You build it and you use it. Hope you like the demo. I hope you like the build. You guys take care.